Bible says that he's going to rise to power very quickly. Real Life with Jack Hibbs starts now. The Bible teaches us about what is known as end times. Some refer to those days as being the end of days or the last days. In fact, John the Apostle called it the last hour. But do we as believers understand the magnitude and the power that is available to us in Jesus Christ when we enter into the last days? The last days are key for ministry and for evangelism. Well, we're going to be learning about aspects of the last days and uh, it's exciting. It's on everyone's tongue, you know, when they um, talk about uh, world events, when things happen. Well, the Bible has the answer. But listen, before we do this, I want you to be very aware of an amazing book. And I, I cannot stress this enough. I've been reading this. In fact, I'm going on my third read of this great book regarding the life of George Whitfield. And this book goes through chronological order of George Whitfield's life and how he, though he was English born, how he came to America, to the colonies, and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ with renowned effect. In fact, one of his favorite congregants was none other than Ben Franklin. Listen, this is our offer for this month. We would love for you to get your hands on it. I think if you read it, you'll be most blessed. It's a very exciting read. In search of something to believe in, a better question might be, what is truth? And how do I find it? Today's modern media or your favorite news source are definitely not the answer. But reliable, hope-filled truths are found in the scriptures. For centuries, men and women have looked to them, finding the answers for living a life that matters. You can trust this source and the purveyors of its truth. One such man was George Whitfield, and his message lives well beyond the grave. George Whitfield by Arnold A. Dalimore will challenge you to put your faith in the power of God, not in the wisdom of man. Order this powerful book now at jackhibbs.com. That's jackhibbs.com. Or call 877-777-2346, 877-777-2346. If the lines are busy, follow the instructions to obtain a copy of George Whitfield. enter the scene of his political career. The Antichrist will be the most winsome politician the world has ever seen. Winsome, convincing. The world will swoon over this guy. And you've seen images where there's this finesse, where there's this thing. Listen, we're humans. Without Christ in our lives, we're suckers for trends and looks. And we are victimized by our own moment we're titillated by the, by the coolness of something for the, for the moment. And this guy's going to come on the scene, and he's going to have, what, maybe the power, uh, the power to speak, uh, the power to speak maybe like a Hitler. Hitler had power to speak. I'm not talking about his, his antics. I'm talking about his power. The Bible tells us in the book of Daniel that the Antichrist will come on the scene, and from heaven's perspective, God says he will speak Big difference. Way big difference. He's 
going to come onto the world scene, the Bible says, offering a peace plan. Can you believe that? I'm not making this up. I'm not reading this from CNN. It says he's going to make a covenant with Israel for one week. One week. That's not one week. That's seven days. The word in English, they put it in one week. It's one seven. It's seven years. One cluster of seven years. That's called the Hebrew of one. Seven years. We know that the Bible says in three and a half years of the seven, he breaks the tree. This tree, he breaks the deal. He's going to come. And the Bible says that he's going to rise to power very quickly. Could this be part of the treaty that brings in peace? Joel chapter 3, verse 1. Joel 3, 1. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I read back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather. healings, false miracles. People, if you're not grounded in the Bible, you're going to get sucked away. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, the Bible tells us that this is how he does it. Through his policies, he will cause deception to prosper in his hand. Policies, politics. And through his politics, he will cause deception to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. Aren't I amazing? He will destroy many through peace. Wow. He's going to bring in an economic, global economy. He will cause all, Revelation 13, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Get in line, get a shot. No, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying the vaccine's the mark. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is people will get in line if they think they're going to be safe or okay. Well, when this time comes, they're going to jump in line. They're going to take cuts. I want the mark. I want the mark. Would you find me? I was here first. They're going to want to be in association with him. They're going to wear his badges and wear his number on the right hand and forehead. They're not going to be laying down on the ground. No, don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want it. They're going to want it. That's not you. You won't, first of all, you won't be there. The church, Christ is coming for the church. But listen, if you're not paying attention, you'll be there. You say, man, I should have paid attention in class that day. If you're not paying attention, you'll be there. It's possible. Only Jesus can rescue you from this. And the Bible tells us, verse 17, that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Listen to what the Bible says. Here's wisdom. Let him who understand calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That's six. 
So what's going on? God says his number is 666. We don't get that so much, but a Jew will go, what? A Jew will say 666 together, three sixes together, the number of man combined together in the Trinity, that's a man declaring himself to be God. He's going to be completely committed to canceling culture. <laughs> you say, come on. Daniel 7, verse 23, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth. That's the last kingdom. Which shall be, last earthly kingdom, which shall be different from all the other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample and break into pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom. And another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High. That's the tribulation saints. He's going to kill them all. And shall intend to change times and seasons. Then the saints shall be given into the hand of for a time, a times, and a half a time, three and a half years. This guy, the Antichrist, is going to be given power to destroy the tribulation believers. The Jews will flee to Petra, the believing Jews. And this one is going to be the one who, in speaking all of these words, declares himself to be God. And notice that he attempts to change times and seasons. It's awesome. The word means... He seeks to cancel traditional thought or traditions. Wash them away. I submit to you, we're almost done. I submit to you this. We are living in a day when what was tradition is now taboo. Yeah. True. Think about it. it does, and listen, it's so... Dem for, listen up, if you're not a believer, figure this out. Check this out. Think this through. This is not a California thing. It's not an American thing. It's not a European thing. It is globally happening right now where whatever cultures there are in the world, if those younger generations have access to the internet, they're throwing off their traditions. They're throwing off their times and traditions and culture for anything that's new. And this man will come along and he's going to say, hey, 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 I'd like to cancel this. Right on. I'd like to cancel that. Yeah, we're with you on that. Think of it. Demonically driven man. Very quickly. One of the ways that he's going to perpetrate this is very easy. Think about, think about the freedoms we've lost because of COVID restrictions. Okay, and think of, by the way, by far, most of the things that we have given away from our own uh, freedoms, they asked us to give them away. Did you know that? There's no law that has yet been passed that takes your freedoms away, but we, we caved. Did you know that? Do this. It's the law. It's actually not the law. But from the beginning, we gave up. Yes. Okay. Whatever. What else do you want me to do? Sit down. Yes. Okay. You know why we did it? Fear. So this is just, this is a little something, a little nothing. Look at this. The U.S. is facing a dollar collapse by the end of 2021 and an over 50% chance of double-dip recession, economist Stephen Rush says. This guy's no slacker. You don't have to be him to figure that out. You cannot give trillions of dollars. Listen, you can't give trillions of dollars unless you realize if we give it, there's going to be a day of reckoning. No, no, let's not talk about that. Let's just give it. Watch. Seriously. So do you know what happens? This, you bring a five-year-old in here right now. This is exactly what happened with the stimulus thing. Bring a five-year-old in here right now, and we're going to pump this guy with 500 cc's of chocolate. <laughs> Just... <laughs> and you're taking him home. You know, see where I'm going? What's going to happen what's, after your house is destroyed because he's on a sugar rush? What happens to the kid? The kid crashes and sleeps for 12 hours. That's exactly what the economy is going to do. Right now, the stock market's setting records through the roof. It's a sugar rush. If you can get it, get it now. Don't spend it. You better bank it. Don't know how long that's going to last, but bank it. Because the sugar rush is going to end. The specialists tell us by late summer. 
2021. Next slide. What are we going to do? Time for a great reset of the financial system, says the Financial Times. Next slide. Introducing the Great Reset, world leaders' radical plan to transform the economy. Well, you say, what's wrong with the economy? Well, we're Americans. We're spoiled, rotten. But listen, we've outspent our ability, and pretty soon we'll join the rest of the world saying, we need a radical plan. Next. Cashless society. Cash could disappear from the UK by 2026. Yeah. Yikes. That was March 12, 2021, that article. Next. Okay. Pope Francis calls for a new world order after the pandemic. Of course he does. And you ought to take, a t take the time to get into that and read about it and find out what role he plays in it. How self-serving is that? You know what? This Pope's been fantastic, though, I must admit. He's been great. You want to know why? More Catholics have left the Catholic Church because of that Pope. <laughs> The Antichrist is going to be the master of deception, as you can imagine. But the Bible says his days are short-lived. The Bible says that when Christ returns in the second coming, at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, that Jesus will destroy him with the breath. Listen, <laughs> it's not like, look, it's not like they get in a headlock. The Bible says Jesus will destroy him with, hello, wait for it, the breath of his mouth. I, don't you love that? Here's this Antichrist who has wreaked havoc on the world like no human ever in human history has left a wake of billions of people dead, the Bible says, and Jesus just goes... <laughs> it's amazing. In this deception of his... His kingdom will begin to fail. He's going to attempt to establish the ultimate man-made politic, but he's demonically possessed. It's going to be the end of man's attempt to rule. Man's will was lost in Eden. His government was declared at Babel, and it ends in the closing chapters of the book of Revelation. The Bible tells us that Christ Jesus returns at the second coming. Now, listen. Remember the rapture, he takes us up. He never comes. He appears in the atmosphere and he takes us from here. And you want to read more about that? Read John 14. Jesus said, I'm going to go away now. See you. Bye, guys. I'm going to go away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I'm going to come again, take you to myself, that where I've been, there you're going to be also. So watch it. Second coming. Second coming. I want you to read today. This is your homework. It's Revelation 19. Watch this. In the second coming, the end of the Antichrist and the end of evil on earth ends this way. The Bible says the church is in heaven. We're there with him. The bride of Christ is with him in heaven. And all of this is going on earth. And the Bible tells us that a door is open in heaven. Now, all my life, I have always seen that in my imagination. I have a crazy imagination. I don't have to be with anybody. I'm with all kinds of people all the time. <laughs> I don't need to, to I don't, I, it's all here. I can, it's fun actually, I love it. I just gotta keep a close rein on it. <laughs> but I've always saw it where I see some sort of heavenly scene and I see these massive, awesome, doors, and they open up toward me, and I see a white horse. Jesus is on a white horse in Revelation 19, and he's seated upon it, and it says, and this might be the reason why my perspective is this way, that his face is brighter than the sun. His beard is white as wool, and that his garment is brighter and glistening more than any fuller's brush can clean, it says. Yeah. And I see this incredible steed, this massive thing. That's where, that's where it's always ended for me. Oh, he comes, he's God, it's awesome, he's coming. And then 
just, I don't know, the Lord touched my imagination. And, and in my mind, I thought, man, if I had a GoPro, I'd, oh, wow. But then I realized, wait a minute, like all good GoPros, you put it on the, you put it on the back of the horse. Because I don't want to put it on him. That's not cool. I want to put it on the back of the horse. I'm going to see what's coming. I want to see. And you, in your mind, now look, go to the back of the horse. And that, that's your perspective. And what do we know about that? We know this that he's on a white horse, he's on it, on his thighs, written King of Kings. <laughs> and, and Lord of Lords. King of Kings and Lord of Lords on his thigh. Wow. Woo. <laughs> and, and the Bible says in Revelation 19 that the host of heaven is with him. How about that? Excuse me? Wait, what? Oh, wait, no, no, wait. The host of heaven. He's, listen, he's the Lord of hosts. I'm not talking about hosting or hostess. The Lord of hosts is the Lord of God's armies. Wait, well, watch, watch, wait. I'm glad, I'm happy for you, but wait. 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 The Lord of hosts means that Jesus Christ is the ruler over the angelic armies of heaven. That's the Lord of hosts. It's heaven's host. It's not humans. It's angelic beings. And apparently, these are the ones that he has summoned for his second coming event. So the door opens up. The horse is there. He's sitting on the horse. He has summoned the host of heaven. And with him is the bride of Christ, it says. Now you can cheer. <laughs> now you can cheer. That day will come. Listen, I sure hope you're ready to meet him. You can trust Jesus Christ. He's Lord and Savior, died on the cross for your sins, rose again from the dead. Everything that he's done was spoken about in Scripture, and everything that he's going to do is spoken about in Scripture. It never goes well for those who oppose him. Don't be antichrist. That's really dumb. Seriously, and, it, and it's bad, and it ends bad for you. Why miss out? Humble yourself, seek God, ask him to forgive you of your sins, and find out that he is the best ever. God bless you guys. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope this message has meant something to you and that quite frankly, we're praying, I'm praying that it has a great impact on your heart. Where are you regarding Jesus Christ? Do you love him? Do you know him? Well, that's why we're here. That's why we are on this program is to bring you into a deeper knowledge of the one who you need to know the most and that's Jesus Christ. So we would love to hear from you. If you'd like to get serious about Jesus, if there's some resource that we could get to you, please let us know. And listen, I want to remind you one more time, one of the most life-changing books that I've read in many, many years is the book that we're offering this month on the life of George Whitfield, America's greatest evangelist. That's right. Historians tell us that when he preached, 20, 30,000, 40,000 people would come and were able to hear him give the gospel. Listen, we want to make sure that this book winds up in your hands as it being our special offer for you this month. You can find out more on how to obtain a copy and many more studies by going to jackhibbs.com. Until next time, God bless you richly. In search of something to believe in? A better question might be, what is truth? And how do I find it? Today's modern media or your favorite news source are definitely not the answer but reliable, hope-filled truths are found in the scriptures. For centuries, men and women have looked to them, finding the answers for living a life that matters. You can trust this source and the purveyors of its truth. One such man was George Whitfield, and his message lives well beyond the grave. George Whitfield by Arnold A. Dalimore will challenge you to put your faith in the power of God, not in the wisdom of man. Order this powerful book now at jackhibbs.com. That's jackhibbs.com. Or call 877-777-2346. 877-777-2346. If the lines are busy, 
follow the instructions to obtain a copy of George Whitfield. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it in one of the great reasons. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Well, this is what you can expect right here on Real Life. The gospel, unfiltered, truthful, honest, and can I put it this way? Even raw. Christ has the answers for you, and they're found in his Bible. That is developing a worldview. That's what we call it, a biblical worldview. Because God's got the answers, and God has shown us the way, and that way is Jesus Christ. He has a plan for your life personally. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to set your DVR to this program. We want you to stay connected with us, and we want you to be expectant that God is going to work in your life. Tell a friend. We would love to have you and others join us right back here on Real Life. Jack Gibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history, which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in radio and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Fibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackfibbs.com and there you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. The preceding program is sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life. Thank mm-hmm. you.